All right. Well, first and foremost, brother, sister Pierce, hello. Good to see you. Good to see you today. Amen. Thank you. And um, I would also, before I even get started, I'd like to say hello to a mother of a friend. Mrs. Shea. Hi. I met her a year ago because it's been a year since I've been up here. And she came up and said, you don't go anywhere. You come here and give me a hug. And I have loved you ever since that day. You remind me so much of my mother-in-law because when my mom passed away and I left Chicago and came back to Spokane, my wife was at her brother's wedding and her mom came up to me and looked at me straight in the face and said, I'm here to let you know I love you. You got one mother left. Until that day, I love my mother-in-law. Somebody might not, but I do. I do. I do. And I just, you know, just want to say hello to those who are out there doing the Lord's work in Spokane, around this country, South America. Hello. Hey, Brian. How you doing, buddy? I miss you. And we want to pray. Well, let, do you or you, me? I'll do it. Amen. All right. Well, let's pray for this outstanding woman here. Father God, today, Lord, as, as, as Brother Mike presses on, we press on by faith, through prayer, through believing in your mighty touch that you will touch the parents of Matt Shea. And Lord, do what you have to do. Do what you have to do, Father God, for we trust you. We lean on your word and your understanding. But Lord, we just thank you that this mighty woman of power and valor is just holding on, Father God. Strengthen her in this time. Strengthen her. For her and Mike have formed such a bond in their marriage over the years, Lord. Let them hold on to that, Father God. Let your peace just overwhelm her. Let your peace overwhelm Mike. Let your peace in everything that you are, which is way beyond our understanding, be in control and over this situation right now. Touch her. Give her the peace and rest she needs, Lord, and let her feel the love from the people in this building, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, I was honestly wondering what I was going to think about and pray about and, 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 and preach on, but then it hit me because Gabe set it off. He said something Thursday. He may not remember, but you mentioned something about Jericho. And I was like, well, I'll be doggone. Jericho. Got here this morning. My man Pete came up to me. Hey, well, why don't you talk about what happened to you? I was like, I am. Deliverance. And all of a sudden, I started thinking, man, the Holy Spirit is not done. This isn't some flavor of the month kind of thing. This ain't some, okay, we're going to kick it off in this college university, but spring coming, I think I'll go into some hiatus. No, the Holy Spirit's still moving. He's still moving. But here's the news flash. He's always been moving. Maybe for the first time in our lives, we got our eyes open. Maybe for the first time in our lives, we got the doors to our homes open. And our hearts open as well. So my message is on deliverance, just in case you want to know. But we'll pray. And we're pressing on because today I'm going to start off this way and I want to end this way. I don't want anybody coming up for prayer today. I want you coming up for deliverance. It is time to get rid of some things that we never should have had in the first place. And there's a story I'm going to get at in a little bit. But let's pray. Father God, Lord, first, I, I just want to thank you for Titus Hug 
he boldly spoke something a couple weeks ago, and it hit me. And what he spoke is, God's already done everything. He doesn't have to prove anything to us anymore. The question is, what are we going to do to show ourselves worthy to him? Lord, we come this morning to lay it all down. We want to prove ourselves to you, Lord. By our faith, by our boldness, by our just admiration for you, Father. You've done it all. It's time for us to get on board. Let the hearts and minds of the people here receive. For this is a day of deliverance. It is time, it is time, and it is time. It's time. I don't know what else to say, Father God. We, you, have been, you have been showing yourself for so long. But it's time. Let it be received in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. We're going to start off this morning in the book of Joshua. Joshua. Because there's a story here. And I remember when Gabe was talking about the fall of Jericho. And yeah, I mean, yeah, they, I mean, those people inside the walls were probably making fun of them when they were walking around, blowing the horns, marching, praising the Lord, and all that. But when those wall fell, I bet you heard a uh oh. <clears throat> Things started falling. God gave Joshua a commandment, a job to do. I mean, Man, the story is just so brutal the way they took people out. But God said all of these things, the, the, the gold and the silver and all these things, I want you to bring them to me to put into my treasury so they can be used for kingdom-minded stuff. How many times have we heard Pastor Matt say that? Bring all that stuff to me so it can be used for kingdom-minded stuff. That's what we were supposed to do. That's what Joshua did. Commander of an outstanding army, thinking everything is fine. One day, they went to a battle, realized we don't need as many people as we think we do. They're just a bunch of small people. They're not large in number. They went into the battle, and they got defeated. The whole entire army got defeated because of one man. And we're going to read that story right here. Could you put up Joshua 7, verse 1? We're going to go verse 1 through 13. But Israel violated the instructions about the things set apart for the Lord. A man named Achan had stolen some things, dedicate, dedicated things. So the Lord was very angry with the Israelites. Achan, the son of Carmi, a descendant of Zimri and Zerah of the tribe of Judah. Joshua sent some of his men to Jericho to spy out the town of Ai, east of Bethel, near Bethaven. When they returned, they told Joshua, there's no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than two or 3,000 men to attack Ai. Since there are so few of them, don't make all our people struggle to go up there. Approximately 3,000 warriors were sent, but they were soundedly defeated. The men of Ai chased the Israelites from a town gate as far as the quarries, and they killed about 36 who were retreating down the slope. The Israelites were paralyzed with fear at this turn of events, and their courage melted away. After all God has done, Joshua and the elders of Israel tore their clothing in dismay, threw dust on their heads, and bowed face down in the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening. Then Joshua cried out, Oh, sovereign Lord, why did you bring us across the Jordan River if you're going to let the Amorites kill us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side. Lord, 
What can I say now that Israel fled from his enemies? For the Canaanites and all the other people living in the land hear about it. They will surround us and wipe our name off the face of the earth. And then what will happen to the honor of your great name? Really? And one thing I want to say before we go forward. When we really, really, really press into reading the word of God, let's really start looking more at the punctuation as well. Verse 10. But the Lord said to Joshua, get up! Why are you laying on your face like that? <laughs> Israel has sinned and broke my covenant. They have stolen some of the things I have commended must be set apart for me. And I have not only stolen them, but have lied about it and hidden it under their own belongings. That is why the Israelites are running from their enemies in defeat. For now Israel itself has been set apart for destruction. I'm going to come back to this next statement in a little bit. I will not return with you any longer unless you destroy the things among you that were set apart for destruction. Once again, verse 13, get up! Command the people to purify themselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord our God of Israel says. Hidden among you, O Israel, are things set apart for the Lord. You will never defeat your enemies until you remove these things from among you. Father God, let it be felt. Let it be heard. Let it be. That story right there. Gabe hit it. I was like, oh my gosh. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Aiken. A man who was a soldier. Heaven knows how many battles he's seen, but he was in the army of the Lord. He, as well as everybody else, were given instruction by Joshua from God. Everything that you guys get from this Jericho falling, and it talks about it in here too, the gold, the silver, all these precious things that God was supposed to have so he can use them for kingdom-minded things. Joshua's thinking, hey, everything's all right, another battle won. But wait a minute, we just got defeated. What happened? What happened was there was a soldier in the ranks who felt he was justified. You know what? I've been fighting all these battles. I've been putting my life on the line. I've been doing things. You know what, man? Look at all this stuff in this town. Yeah, you know, I'm justified in taking something. You know what? I've been doing a lot. Swinging this sword, fighting. I've been doing a lot in 2023 and 2022. I've been praying walking in obedience, doing things that God wants me to do. You know what? I'm justified. But hold on a minute. Maybe we're not. Because the more and more I got into this story, the more and more the Holy Spirit said, yeah, but just two types of justification. And I was talking to my wife about that. There is a fleshly justification and there is a spiritual justification. We live in a world now where all we hear, even from people of God, is the fleshly justification. You know what? I'm justified in feeling the way I do because of what he did to me. You know what? I'm justified for acting the way I do because of what my mom did, because of what my mom didn't do. You know what? I'm justified to act the way I do because of what my dad did or what my dad didn't do. I'm justified because of the life I had as a kid. You know what? I'm justified because of the way my wife treats me and what she says. I'm justified for what my husband says and how he treats me. I'm justified. And with that fleshly justification, we did the thing we weren't supposed to. We came out of the enemy's camp and we gave our life to Christ. And there were some things we were supposed to bring to God to use. 
the way we love, the way we serve, the way we treat people, the way we preach, the way that we pray. But there were some things that were supposed to be brought to God for destruction. And what we did is we took those things and brought them over to our camp and God's camp and we buried them. Achan buried what he stole under his tent. He took a robe, he took a bar of gold, weighing about a pound, and he took 200 silver coins. The Bible said he buried them under his tent, but for some strange reason, he buried the 200 coins even deeper. Then I had to look at my life. Man, I was in a movie theater on a Monday night watching a movie called Come Out in Jesus' Name. My wife called me at work and was like, we're going to a movie. And she knows me. You know, I get in those recliner chairs and somebody turn the heat on. <laughs> it's over, man. It's like half an hour into the movie. She's like, get up. <laughs> She's like, I'm knocked out. And, that's a, and that was my frame of mind. I was like, man, just another movie. I said, but I'll go. Let's go to the movies. But then all of a sudden, she said, I'm going to send you the trailer. And she sent me the trailer. And I watched that trailer the first time. And right in the middle of that trailer, a guy said something. And I was like, oh, what did he say? I watched that trailer again the second time. And I was like, oh. That was for me. And I listened to it a third time, and that's when the Holy Spirit put my name in there. And what he said in the middle of that trailer, this man speaking, was, the devil don't mind you coming to church. The devil don't mind you praying. The devil don't mind you doing anything for the kingdom as long as you ain't delivered, as long as you ain't changed. As long as you keep hiding these things under your tent in your God's army. And, I, and that hit me hard. So here I am driving from my job to the movie theater. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is going to be interesting. I get there, I walk upstairs, I'm standing at the, at the front of the movies with Pastor Matt. And Sister Victoria came in. And they walked in, and I stood there, and all I said was, Lord, one word, one word, one word. I didn't know what the word was, but one word. I watched that movie, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, my body started acting up. There was something in my body that was feeling kind of like, like my, I, I, you know, not like I wanted to, you know, throw up or anything. My body, my body was like, you know, we think, well, I think we need to go outside and get some fresh air. <laughs> I, I've, you know, I was like, what in the world is that? And, but then all of a sudden the spirit said, no, you staying right here. And then we stood up and we started saying, come out in Jesus' name. And man, you can feel the Holy Spirit moving everywhere. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is going on? And then something happened to me that was the most supernatural thing I have ever felt in my life. I felt God move so many times in my life. I remember being just dismayed with life one day, my wife and I, and we were standing outside and an angel came running down the street right at us. I've seen some stuff. But what happened that night? Let's put it this way. The man known as Brother Willie I was standing in the movie theater, and I, was, I thought I was still standing. And here's, here's my frame of thought. Boy, somebody really crying out to the Lord right now. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the brain of me and the body of me thought that, but the spirit of me was the one down on his knees crying out. Yeah. Holy Spirit just went boom. Not only... Did he eradicate things that were in my life? But he eradicated the thing I dug the deepest. 
I had grief in my life I never even thought or knew about. But I remember he said, God is going to use you, but you ain't going no further in this spot until we get rid of this stuff. Aiken's fleshly justification led to a circumstantial situation. And what was that situation? 36 innocent men, fathers, brothers, sons, and husbands died, not in battle, but in retreat because of his move. So his fleshly justification brought about a circumstantial situation which brought about something we don't ever want, God's frustration. Before you know it, Joshua's like, okay, what just happened? He's down on his face. Wondering, where the army? How did we lose? But God told him how. We're going to have to dig deep. Well, not us. The Holy Spirit. It's going to have to get deep. We're going to have to allow it to get deep. And even get deep and remove some things that we don't even know about. But are you going to let it happen? Or are we going to ride in the fleshly justification? Brother Sawyer, can you put four words up here for me? Fleshly justification. Because of what I did, because the Holy Spirit told me that what the enemy did was he took your grief and covered everything else up. But you can't get mad at the enemy. You're the one that hit it. So in the middle of me trying to go through all that and everyone else that say, you know what? I'm justified. I'm justified. I, 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 I justified. I'm justified in feeling the way out. I'm justified for keeping these things in my life because if somebody make me mad, I can always go pull them up and I can use them. My anger, my revenge, when God strictly says that vengeance is his. And in the middle of all that, Holy Spirit was like, yeah, look at those words. I'm sitting there wondering what's going on. I think I'm justified. When I start doing that, I realize that I is in the middle of everything. I'm in the middle of everything. In the middle of my sin was I. Was in the middle of my pride was I. What's in the middle of me thinking I'm justified? And in in that act, all I did was restrict the movement of the Holy Spirit. So who was in the middle of my restriction? Me. Me. But enough of the fleshly justification. (laughs) Let's go to the spiritual justification. Romans 3, 23, 24. Where it reads, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All are justified freely as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. See, what we need to be doing now Instead of thinking we're justified on this level, where it's all fleshly, we need to find ourselves justified on this level, where we know we are in tune with the Holy Spirit and what God wants us to do. Because it is in that justification right there that I can tell the world, you can do what you want, but you can't stop me. It's in that justification I can walk with the power and the authority which is in Christ Jesus, and we can do the things we're called to do. It's in that power and that justification because of what he did 
that we walk in peace and freedom. And we don't have time to be keeping things buried anymore because all they're doing is getting people around us defeated. That's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. Ain't nobody going to find out about it. They don't, nobody has to find out about it. I had things that I completely forgot about. And the enemy used it anyway. Think about your life today. What in the world did you bring to God's camp to hide, to use at a later date for no good purposes that you were supposed to bring to him for destruction in the first place? Jealousy's got to die. Well, you don't know what he's done to me, and I never will. Fleshly justification, spiritual justification. Are we going to work along the lines of ourselves, or are we going to continue with the plumb line, which is in Christ Jesus? Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? Because that move that I experienced from the Holy Spirit, whoo, man. That was, that was cool. Amen. But out of that came a sense of freedom. And a sense of freedom. And a sense of freedom. And I just found myself like I was walking on air. I was walking on air. Because I said, Lord, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, one word, one word. I sat in that movie theater and did not even know what the word was. Holy Spirit knew and said, we need to remove this from him because he's got work to do. But I honestly say, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for listening to me because I did stand there and, and, and I opened myself up to say, Lord, whatever it is, let it come in so we can kick things out. Let it get things out. Let it move it on down. I don't need this anymore. For starters, I don't even know how it got there, but I do know how it got there because I was so busy with life that I looked at the death of family members and just told myself I'll grieve later. Days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years, and I wasn't thinking about it. But guess who was? The old rotten enemy of ours. He's like, I am going to use that against him, and he ain't even going to know about it. Yeah, but the Holy Spirit did. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to tell you right now, it is the coolest thing in the world when you know that you know that you know that you know. That there is someone looking out for you. Yeah. Them little kids when their babies are running around the house looking like little balls in a pinball machine. Or, and they bouncing off of everything. One year old trying to walk. They bouncing into everything. But what the joy in their face is when they're bouncing around and falling and tripping is when they look over their shoulder and see mom and dad walking behind them smiling. They're like, yeah, I may not be going straight, but I'm going. <laughs> That is a sense of security that gives them nothing but the ultimate joy. And we got that in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We do. Give it a try if you haven't. And if you have, continue. <laughs> you know, it's Palm Sunday. And like uh, so many other places, you know, we celebrate that triumphant entry into Jerusalem for our Lord and our Savior. As the man, our Lord, our Savior, our King, told those two guys, hey, go get that donkey. We'll ride in on that. 
Maybe they were expecting a king, but he came in on a donkey. But that's all right. He came in on a donkey, but he came in with the power to deliver people and to set them free. He may have came in riding on a donkey, but he came in with the authority to cast out demons and to heal the lepers. Boom! He may have rode in on a donkey, but he rode in with the power to set the captives free and to set the oppressed free. He set me free. And he came in riding on a donkey with the authority to say, I am the Son of God. They, he made a lot of people mad. Like any other bridge, they got over it. I mean, that story uh, in Luke, it's just, it's just one of the funny ones. You know, of all the scrolls that he opens up and reads first, he reads the one about him that was written by Isaiah the prophet. And then as you read that story and go further down, they got so mad with him, they wanted to push him off a cliff. And the part, and the part about it is I, I find myself laughing every time I read that because Jesus just looked at them, turned, and walked straight through the crowd. And that was his way of saying, find a bridge, get over it. Because you ain't about to do nothing today. The man that rode in on a donkey, the things that he would encounter in the next upcoming days. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But I'm going to go back to that story of Achan and Joshua. Joshua's like, Lord, what do we do? God's like, you are going to have to do something because forget back with me. We got to get ourselves delivered from this situation. What they had to do was just tough. But the Bible says he got a hold of the tribal members and they talked and it, it came all the way down the line until they found out it was Achan. Achan must have been a friend of Joshua because he's like, Joshua, what did you do? Well, I kept a robe that was from Babylon. I kept a bar of gold and I took 200 silver coins and I buried the silver coins deeper than that. You know what, if I find myself exposed, like I said earlier, you can have the robe, you can have the gold. I just want to bury those coins so I can make sure you don't find them. But they were found out. Aiken and everything about his existence, everything destroyed. I still think about the 36 families that lost the soldiers. But there had to be deliverance from all that. And it was. Because the Bible says in the next chapter, they finally went back into AI and just psh, took them. Look what had to happen. Look what had to happen. For a minute there, I was like, yeah, there was 36 deaths. No, there was more than that because Aiken got taken out and so did everybody he knew. All because of fleshly justification. He was taken out for fleshly justification. And today, we need to be delivered from it. We have to be delivered from it. We can't. I'm not even going to stand up here and say that I was short. May not be. I'm not even going to stand up here and say we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't. All I know is that around this world, especially around this country, there are graveyards littered with people crying out that are less than 30 years old because of stuff. Holding on to stuff for so long that death is the way out. 
Suicide is the way out. I don't have no family, so I'm going to forge a covenant with this gang. I'm so lonely, I'm going to sleep with that loser so he can give me a baby. I don't care if he sticks around or not. I got a baby. We're just finding these fleshly justifications to prove who we are when we are a child of God. And we're trying to find some, some, something rational about it. Yeah, but. Well, you wonder what Pastor Matt says about buts. When it comes to God, they need to be covered up and done away with. God is moving. He is shaking things up. And this morning, Lord, I say, shake up the things that we have buried so deep, even the things that we don't know about. Let them come to the surface so they can be eradicated. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Jesus talked about it in Matthew. When he says, when you pray, don't pray babbling on. Don't pray with all this other stuff. Pray to the Father like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We can stay right there. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but what? Deliver us. It's time for deliverance. I've been saying that prayer since I was a kid and still burying things under my tent in God's army. And I'm wondering why I come up here for prayer every Sunday and the same thing keeps happening Monday through Saturday because the enemy is just like, you didn't get delivered of it, so I'm going to pop you again. You came and prayed Sunday at 10 o'clock. You didn't get rid of it. I'm going to pop you on Tuesday. You came up here on another Sunday and all you did was pray about it, but you didn't get delivered. I'm going to pop you until you do. And that's exactly what he does. We get prayer for it. It's time to get delivered from it. Whatever it is, speak it out. Tell it to come out in Jesus' name. Get out. Even if I don't know what it is, come out. But most of us do know what we got buried under the tent. Most of us do. Just get rid of it. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father God, Holy Spirit, let delivery flow this morning. Let it flow. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the things that we don't even know about. And really, really shake up the ground on delivering us from the things we do know about. We speak deliverance this morning over Pastor Matt and Vika's kids. Deliverance in their mind and their hearts from the things that they seen, the things that they heard. Deliverance. That as they continue to keep their eyes unto the hills from which their help cometh, that that deliverance will come. So Sister Vika, keep your arms open. They're coming. Pastor Matt, from one soldier to another, keep looking down range. They're coming. Come on. There's going to be some uncomfortable stuff happening. But it's got to take place. Jesus made somebody... So uncomfortable, they were like, we got to push this brother off a hill. He talking too much. 
We got to purge ourselves of this stuff. We will never find the true freedom until we do. I was set free of something, and it's just a whole new day. It's just a whole new day. It's just a, it's a new day. But here's the thing. God used me up to this point. But the Holy Spirit said, but until you get these things from among you, you ain't going any further. You can think it all you want. But like I said, we can come up here and pray over the same thing today. But if there ain't no deliverance, you can best believe your bottom dollar, the enemy is going to do something about it between Monday and Saturday night. You see, my wife made a, something, she made a statement about 15 years ago. You don't remember. Oh, well, you probably do. She said, you know what? We spend so much time coming to church on Sunday morning, waiting to hear a word, waiting to get a touch, waiting to receive. What we should be doing is everything that the kingdom is allowing us to do Monday through Saturday. So Sunday morning when we come in, I'm not about receiving. It's like, what can I disperse from me through the Holy Spirit to help somebody struggling because of what we want through all week? I think we're getting a few things backwards. We're not supposed to be a pinball machine Monday morning and Saturday night. He can't do anything to you except for the stuff that we're holding on to. It's time to get rid of it. It's time to get rid of it. And I'm going to close with this. Can you go back to Jeremiah 7? I'm going to read verse 12 and verse 13 one more time. And once again, it reads as follows. That is why the Israelites are running from their enemies in defeat. For now Israel itself has been set apart for destruction. I will not remain with you any longer unless you destroy the things among you that were set apart for destruction. Get up! Command people to purify themselves in preparation for tomorrow. Monday's coming. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Hidden among you, Israel, are things set apart for the Lord. You will never defeat your enemies until you remove these things from among you. It's time to eradicate the garbage that we brought into God's camp. It's time. I didn't come here this morning, so forgive me. I didn't have any plans on giving anybody a guilty complex. I had no plans on giving anybody a guilty conscience. As a matter of fact, by my brother's plan, I don't even want this to be considered a sermon. I don't want that. What I want is for these words to create a battle cry. Get up! Come on! Get rid of the stuff we shouldn't have been holding on to long enough anyway. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. It is a day and it is a time of deliverance. Get up because our God said, and if the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, until you get these things away from you, I will no longer remain. So are we going to play church or are we going to be the church? That song we sang, when the glory is in the room, nothing else is needed. Woo, that's, I say we end with that. Um, it's been a year since I've been up here. It feels good. I hope all goes well for our friends and our family and our, our brothers and sisters in South America. On fire, come on. Get up.
It ain't the Holy Spirit's going to move some stuff out of you you didn't even know you had. But the things you know about, it's time to get eradicated from it. The prayer warriors are here. The intercessors are here. Everybody's here. Come up and get free of this stuff. Titus, hug. I'm done. God bless you.